Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Look what I got today. We got our little mini mic, my absolute favorite accessory in the entire world. It just fashion vogue, you know, obsessed. Yeah, we're just gonna have a little chill cozy time today talking about all the things that I have read or kind of read over the last few months. Basically, I'm gonna be talking about any book that I have physically picked up over the last two months. I'm just gonna give you a nice little reading recap. And I had a stressful work day today, so I'm just ready to chill out, talk about some books and be merry and happy and have no cares in the world. So I wanna split this video up into three different parts. I'm gonna be talking about the books that I have finished and like completely read over the last two months. I'm gonna be talking about the books that I am currently reading or in the middle of. And then I'm gonna be talking about books that I've like soft DNF or like books that I'm not necessarily DNF, like absolutely never reading this book again, just more like mm, not right now, you know? I've, I do that with a lot of books. And also I'm gonna be talking about these books in more of just like a quick synopsis kind of way. I'm not gonna be diving deep into my thoughts. If you want my deep dive thoughts on these books, I'm going to leave my vlog playlist down below, which gives you like real time thoughts as I'm reading the books. And if you want the deep dives, go to that playlist. But in today's video, I'm just gonna be giving you like quick little wrap ups and just giving you my overall thoughts on the books that I've read. So if you were unaware, I was in the world's biggest reading slump in like end of January and pretty much the entirety of February. I literally read one book in February, like completed one book. I tried many books, which is what you're gonna see when we get to the softy enough section. I tried so many different books and nothing was sticking until finally one did. My one true love, Daisy Jones and the Six. I'll get into that later. So yeah, that's been the vibe over the past few months. Absolutely hated it, but I am finally back into my reading mojo and I'm like so excited to talk to you about the books that I'm currently reading because honestly, Honestly, vibes. All right, so let's just get into it. Why don't we just start with the books that I have fully completed over these past few months. First one, might as well start off with Daisy Jones and the Six. I mean, can it get any better than this? This is a book that pulled me out of the reading slump. She pulled me from the depths of the trenches of the underworld, like out of the slumpiness and into the light. I love this book with my whole heart and soul. This is the third time I've read this book and I cannot wait. The TV show comes out on Friday, two days from now. And I am so, so excited. If you don't know what this is about, you're probably living under a rock. It's basically loosely based off of Fleetwood Mac, which is like a seventies rock band. And it's about these two musical groups or musical acts, Daisy Jones and then the six. And they basically come together for this collaboration album. And it is pure gold. This book is everything I ever want ever in any kind of consumption of media ever. It is inner lives of celebrities. It is music. It is like production. It is just the vibes of this book are immaculate. I could never ask for anything more in a book. And it was just so perfectly well done. It is so emotional. I cried. I'm not going to be able to hold it together when I watch this TV show. I'm going to be so unwell. Tears streaming down my face the whole time. This book just, it never fails to amaze me. It's literally like a movie playing in my head every time I read this. So five out of five stars. Incredible. If you haven't tried it at least yet, like I would highly encourage you to give to try. I think it's Taylor Jenkins Reid's best book. Yeah, I said it. I think it's better than Seven Husbands. There, I said it. Okay, bye. So the next book I have to talk to you about is I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. This is the first manga that I have ever read in my life, and it was incredible. I think I gave it a four star. I should double check that, but I'm pretty sure I gave it a four star. Um, confirmed, I gave it a four star. Basically, it's about this girl who gets pancreatic cancer, and she's just like trying to live and like just trying to do all of the things. She knows she doesn't have a long time left, and she befriends this kid in her school, and it's just so sweet. And the guy who she befriends is like, kind of reluctant to be her friend at first and then they just form this like blooming friendship and it is so beautiful and like I cried a lot in the end and it was so peaceful and like, not peaceful but really sad. It was so wholesome just like I can't believe that like I felt this way reading a manga. I didn't think that I would be able to tear up and like get so emotional with just like I mean I read this in like two hours not even two hours. It was just so great. I would highly, highly recommend this. If you are interested in getting into manga, I think this is a really good place to start. The story is contemporary. It moves. It's really heartfelt and sweet. And the, just the friendship that they form is beautiful. And this has propelled me into the manga world. Guess who bought all eight volumes of Spy Family? I don't want to talk about it. Manga is incredible. Why have I never read it before? I'm so excited to get into the world of manga. And this was such a great place to start if you are interested in reading it. Also, the art style, amazing. Just stunning, beautiful book. I'm obsessed. Please give it a try if you are interested in manga. Would recommend. Next book I have is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. Stunning. 
celebrity status, unreal, beautiful, unbelievable, haunting. This story is everything. It is everything, okay? I loved this book so much. This book is about two women who are in a relationship and one of them is a marine biologist. She gets deployed to go on this submarine mission like she normally does. She's been on a handful of them before, but when she goes on this particular mission, something goes wrong. Something goes terribly, terribly wrong and really messes her up. Like really, really bad. She's on this submarine mission significantly longer than she was expecting to be. Basically changes her for the worse. Essentially, you're flip-flopping back and forth between two different timelines. You're following her wife who is at home and then you're following her who is on the submarine and you're getting the back and forth between the two perspectives of where of where each of these people are at. Okay, I don't like horror. I don't. But this book is like very light horror. It is so haunting. It is so beautiful. The imagery, like the water, the all of it. It's just like this beautiful piece of art that formulates in your brain. The quotes in here are incredible. I'm talking about like life quotes, like they hit deep. I have to tell you my favorite quote in here because I've never read a quote like this before. Grief is selfish. We cry for ourselves without the person we have lost far more more than we cry for the person. But more than that, we cry because it helps. The grief process is also the coping process. And if the grief is frozen by ambiguity, by the constant possibility of reversal, then so is the ability to cope. It's not grief, it's more like a haunting. Dead, absolutely dead. And that's just one quote from this book. Also, not long book at all. It's only like 200 pages or so. It is so good. It's a quick read. It's haunting. It's plot driven, but also character driven. It's beautiful. It's literally a piece of art. And if you like literary fiction, if you like horror or like not even if you don't, you don't even have to like horror. I hate horror and I loved it. I would really, really recommend this if you are interested in it seriously gave it five stars. Honestly, it probably will be in one of my top books of the year. It was so good. Next book I have to talk to you about today is The Final Arrival of Opal and Nev. This book was so cute. They are a biracial musical duo in like the 1970s. Do you see a theme here? I really like books about music a lot. And it's like a documentary style book, very similar to Daisy Jones and the Six. So if you like Daisy Jones and the Six, I would really re recommend you to read The Final Arrival of Opal and Nev. They have very similar themes. The one thing that I do think Opal and Nev does a little bit better than Daisy Jones and the Six does is that they have a much larger discussion about race and prejudice and discrimination um, within the music industry, especially in that 1970s time, you know, when black artists had such a prominence uh, in music and stuff like that, but they were being suppressed by a lot of the higher ups in music. If you are looking for more of a discussion surrounding race in the music industry and prejudice, I would highly recommend you read it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a great read. The audiobook was amazing. They had different character voices for each of the characters. Like it really stood out in my head. It was like listening to a podcast. Truly phenomenal audio experience. Would recommend that one. I gave it four stars and yeah, I really liked it. I would definitely recommend it. Do you see a theme? All of the books that I read are like actually genuinely good. Okay, next book I read was The Night Swim. I gave this 4.5 stars. Read this in one day, binged the audiobook. It was so incredible. If you read this book, please listen to it on audio because that is how it is meant to be read. So The Night Swim is about this podcast host. Think of Serial when you, like the podcast Serial when you think of this, or like any true crime podcast basically. So this woman who hosts this podcast is going to this town to investigate a sexual assault case. She gets to the town investigating this case and then all of a sudden she starts receiving mysterious letters from someone in the town talking about their loved one who had passed away like 20 plus years ago or something like that. And she keeps receiving these letters. You're kind of going back and forth between these two different timelines of like her currently investing the case and then like these letters that she's receiving. And as you continue on the book, you're going to realize that these two storylines are actually a lot more similar than you would expect. It's very interesting, very intriguing. The audiobook was amazing, like could not stop listening to it. It was basically a podcast in a book form. And I didn't actually look at the actual book form, but I think it was written in podcast style too. So I would highly recommend the audiobook. They literally had like ambiance and stuff like that in it. It was great 
great, phenom. Gave it 4.5 stars, but major trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape. That is like the central theme of the book, especially with the case that this woman is investigating. It is a sexual assault case, so they're gonna be talking about it a lot. But really, really good book. Truly would recommend it if you can handle the trigger warnings. And the last book that I read and completed is What the Road Said by Cleo Wade. Guys. Okay, first of all, this is a picture book. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I was gifted this book by one of my lovely, lovely subscribers, Colleen. Thank you so much. She gave me two picture books just to like help me get out of my reading slump. And she is just an absolute gem. She is an actual children's librarian and she also has a channel on YouTube, which I will link down below. She is beautiful. She is a gem. And I am just so thankful for you. Thank you. It's literally just a book about life. Okay, when life gets you down, read this book. Just do it. Yes. This is a picture book, but like it goes beyond it. The words transcend children. Okay. This is a book that can be applied to all walks of life. It is so beautiful. I literally cried reading it. You know what? I did partially film a reading vlog when I actually unboxed these and I read this right after I unboxed them, but the reading vlog ended up being a piece of shit. And so I just discarded it. Not because of this, just because I didn't keep up with reading and I just like stopped doing the vlog. So let me just insert a clip of me reading this book right now. I'm literally speechless. That was, that was everything I ever needed. <laughs> Wow, I can't believe that I feel this way. I have full body chills. Oh my God, oh my God. Run, don't walk to your library to get this. I would highly recommend this. If you want a just a heartfelt read, if you just need a little pick me up as an adult, if adulting is hard, just read the book, okay? You know what? Being an adult is really hard some days and today was one of them. I think I should just reread this again, honestly, today it was. <sighs> rough. So that concludes all the books that I have like totally completely finished. Let's move on to the books that I have like just softy enough. These books are not bad. They're truly not bad. It was just they were not pulling me out of the reading slump. So I was trying anything. I was trying everything and anything to get me out of this reading slump. And you know what? Some of these didn't stick, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to read them because I honestly want to read all of them. It's just a not right now. First one I wanted to talk to you about is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. I got about halfway through this. And then I switched to audio because the audio came in on my audible and I was like, oh great But no, it was not great. The audio just didn't hit the same as reading it physically. Reading it physically, it just, it felt so relatable when I read it physically. But then when I switched to the audio, for some reason, it just like didn't hit the same. I don't know if it was the fact that I had it on like 1.5 speed or it was sped up or something, but it just felt like I was reading through the book so quickly and I couldn't absorb what was actually happening. I don't know. It just, I didn't really enjoy the audiobook for it. And for no particular reason, because it wasn't a bad audiobook at all, it just didn't like hit with me the way that I wanted this book to and the way that it started off. Like when I started this book off, it was so good and I felt like I was really connecting with it. Essentially, it's about a woman who has depression and she's talking like severe, severe depression, very deep depression. She's just talking about her life ever since she was in childhood all the way up until, you know, her late 40s and stuff like that when she got a divorce and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I just felt like I could relate to the character more when I was reading the book physically versus on audio. So I got about halfway through this. I definitely want to finish this book. Like 100% want to finish it. I just have to find the time to sit down and actually finish the book. Next one. Guilty. I hate myself for this, honestly. Made it about 70 pages. A place for us. This is a book that has been on my TBR literally since I started reading it, since like 2018. It is my longest TBR vet. I don't know why. I don't know why I put it. You know what? No. This is what happened. I put it down because I hit a reading slump. That's why I put it down. I got to about page 70 in this and it was five star feels incredible. It was beautiful. I was loving it. You're basically following this like Indian Muslim family who is getting together for one of their daughter's weddings. And the family has had a big falling out. Like there is a son in the family who has completely like disowned himself from his family, just totally, totally going against all of his parents' traditions, just going off and like doing his own thing. And the daughter's wedding brings them all back together. It was so beautiful. You're getting flashbacks from like their previous lives and when they were younger and stuff like that. And honestly, this is the literary fiction of my dreams but like I hit a reading slump and baby I couldn't do it I couldn't pick it up I was so sad about that too this is not a DNF it is not a DNF by any means honestly I'm probably going to give this book five stars but I just have to read it I can't explain it same with sorrow and bliss I mean the next few you're gonna see too you're gonna be like Kara what yeah I just 
Guys, I hate reading slumps, okay? They make me want to read nothing. All they make me want to do is play video games and that's it. Yeah, I've turned into a gamer, like a cozy gamer. Okay, so that was a place for us. We'll be coming back to that one. Next one. Sorry, guys. I feel like I'm going to disappoint every single person on this video. And that is the Night Circus. Again, hit at the wrong time. I started reading this book when I got COVID in January, end of January, and like literally couldn't make it past 10 pages because brain fog. Again, not a bad book. Just physically couldn't read anything for the moment. So I literally made it 20 pages. That's it. And then I was like, I can't read anything. I need to just do anything else but read. I will be coming to the back to this one at some point. Please do not be alarmed. I will read this book and I want to do a reading vlog for this book. I just need to not have COVID to do that, okay? And then the last one that I physically read, even if only for a little bit, was Blood Mercy. I have no idea who this one is by. This is a Kindle Unlimited book. Tested this out a few weeks ago when I was trying to get out of my reading slump and it just wasn't working for me at the time. You know, to be honest with you, I felt like I was hooked from the beginning. I felt like it had a strong plot, but like it was like information overload all at one time. And I was very confused as to who the characters were. I couldn't figure out if a character was a dog or a human. I was too confused by that to keep going. And it was just, it was a lot of information all at once. And I was like, I can't, I can't. I can't. I couldn't do it. So I put it down. Again, doesn't mean I'm not going to read the book because honestly, I bet I would like it if I kept going with it. I just need to be in the right mood in the right time and space. And Daisy Jones and the Six was the only thing that could be pull me out of that reading slump. So that is all of the books that I have like soft DNF'd for now. Next, let's move on to my current reads, which I'm actually so excited and I'm loving everything I'm currently reading right now, which is amazing. All right, so first book that I am currently reading is Atomic Habits by James Clear. I know I have been reading this book for over a month now, but it is with a purpose, okay? This book is phenomenal. It's so good. It is the nonfiction book of my dreams, all right? This is basically a book that is talking all about habit building and habit forming and breaking bad habits, how to build better habits, all of that good stuff. It is literally so amazing. The examples are wonderful. It is so, so, so good. But the reason that I'm reading it so slow is because I'm actually trying to like implement stuff. And I have a phenomenal idea for a video that I'm going to be using this book for. So watch out for that. I'm so excited. I'm just loving this book. I feel like it is a eye-opening book helping me actually implement good habits in my life and being able to stick to those good habits. I love reading nonfiction sometimes. It just fuels my soul and it makes me feel like I am becoming a better person. And I'm just going through like a self-improvement girly time right now. So don't judge me and read this book if you are there with me, okay? Speaking of nonfiction... Okay, this one's a little weird. This one's a little weird. The next book I'm gonna talk to you about is Traction by Gina Wickman. And you're like, why? It's a book about business, huh? Yes, this is a book about business. If you've watched my channel recently or over the past month of February, you would know I feel like I have been struggling with my YouTube channel, okay? I have just feel, felt like a fish out of water lately. I felt like I have just putting feelers out to every corner of the internet, trying to figure out what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. And I've been into a very self-productivity phase, like self-improvement phase. I've been watching a lot of Ali Abdal. It's fine, I'm fine. But he suggested this book for people who are like trying to just find a path for their YouTube channel. I All I'm trying to do by reading this book is just get direction on what I am doing with my YouTube channel. This is a book very much geared towards small businesses. Like this is a book that is geared for businesses that like have a team and like have a bunch of people and all this kind of stuff. And whilst I do not have that, all I want to do is formulate a plan of what I want my channel to be. <laughs> and this book was suggested to be able to come up with like a vision of how to make that happen. So I'm really enjoying it. I don't think a lot of people would enjoy this book and it's probably not applicable to a lot of you, but this is a channel about books that I'm reading and this is a book that I'm reading. Do with that what you will. Don't judge me. We're all here to learn, baby. Next book I have, playing off of the nonfiction, but it's not that kind of nonfiction, is Spare by Prince Harry. Yeah, I'm still reading that too. I was actually going to DNF this book. Like I got halfway through and I was like, I'm bored. And then I stopped listening to it. But then Reed started listening to it. He just kept talking to me about it in a not great way. <laughs> And then I was like, okay, I wanna know what it's about. I wanna keep reading it. You know what Spare is. It's Prince Harry's memoir, okay? And it's bad. 
It's wouldn't recommend it. I know nope, not even a little bit. But here's the thing with Prince Harry's book. And I'm probably not going to talk about this book on my channel again. I'm over halfway. I'm like 60% of the way through right now. The audiobook is fine. He's talking about it. He's talking about himself. But like, <sighs> here's the thing. Prince Harry, I understand. I understand your mom died and you are in the public eye and you have paparazzi chasing you all the time. I know. I, I hear you. I listening, I, I, I am sure that is so shitty. And I will never know what that is like. But the book didn't have to be 400 pages. You keep talking about how much the paparazzi are affecting you. And I'm sure that is not a false thing. I'm sure that truly, truly affects you. And I hear you. But like, I didn't need 400 pages of you saying the same thing over and over and over again. And then also, he, there are some parts that you can, they can just be left out, okay? If you've read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Just leave those parts out. We don't need to hear it. I, I, TMI, man. TMI, okay? <laughs> If you're looking for the tea on this book, there isn't much. <laughs> And I haven't gotten to the part where he is talking about Megan and he hasn't met Megan yet where I'm at. So I don't know if there's more tea to come, but like, honestly, I'm 60% of the way through the book and I just don't care anymore. I don't care. I got the message. You hate the paparazzi. I get it. I get it. But I still want to keep reading because I'm already 60% of the way through and I just, I have it on Audible and I might as well just keep going, you know? So that's Spare. Wouldn't, wouldn't recommend that one. It's a gnar for me, dog. Next two books. You guys are going to be psyched when I talk about these, okay? The first book that I'm in the middle of right now when I am loving Ninth House Baby. Ninth House by Libra Devil! I am really enjoying this. I am 80 pages in and I'm loving it, and I'm doing a reading vlog about it, so stay tuned for that. That's all I'm gonna say about that book. I just want you to know I'm reading it, okay? Great. And the last book I have for you is actually another one that is so exciting, also doing a reading vlog for this one. This is a book that was given to me. It is my first advanced reader's copy I've ever received, ever, and I'm so excited about it. I am so excited about it. And that book is The God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. This book is so special because this author is actually an author from Minneapolis. She like runs in my social circles and we like know each other through friends and stuff like that. I got invited to like my favorite local, local bookstore in Minneapolis for her launch day release, like author signing and meet and greet and stuff like that. And I'm so, so, so excited. Like I've literally been, never been more excited about like any kind of like bookish thing ever. I'm so, except when I bet back in the books, that was truly incredible. But I'm just so excited and so thrilled to have this experience. So thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. I'm so happy and I cannot wait to meet you. It's going to be great. So The God of Endings is about this young woman named Colette. She's not technically young because she's a vampire. This book very, very much gives The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue mixed with The Dowry of Blood. I'm around like page 80 right now and I'm really enjoying it. The writing is so beautiful, like stunning. The prose is just flowing and the descriptors she uses are incredible. And I'm not saying this just because like I, she's a Minneapolis author and a friend of a friend. And then this is the first arc that I've ever received. I am not truly, I am telling you my honest opinion on this. The writing is really, really beautiful. And I think if you like literary fiction, if you like historical fiction, not magical realism, but it's, cro it's towing the line of that, right? Like she's a vampire. I mean, it's really, gorgeous. I feel like it definitely leans more Addie LaRue. I'm filming a vlog for it. So if you want my end-up thoughts, stay tuned for that. But like, honestly, really enjoying this. And I just literally cannot wait for the launch release party. It comes out March 7th. So if you're interested next Tuesday, get it. Just, just get it. It's great. Yeah. I will give you my full thoughts on this book and on 9,000 in my upcoming reading vlogs. All right, guys. So that's it. That is the current reads, the soft DNFs and the most recent reads I have for you. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you are enjoying my videos and enjoying my content, I would absolutely love that. Thank you very much. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a wonderful day or night. Take care of yourselves, lovelies. Just self-care all the time. Love you. Bye. Peace.